A blessed day, Church. Welcome to our Ictus Dumaguete online worship service. Today, as we have our message, allow me to open this with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day where you gathered us together in unity as we come into your word. Help us, Father, that we can discover even more greater things from your word as we continue to strengthen our community, our fellowship in your presence. So have your way now, and Holy Spirit, we ask for your divine wisdom and guidance and revelation to come before us. We open our hearts and help us to open our spiritual eyes 
our spiritual ears so that we may hear specifically and clearly what God wants us to do as we continue to follow Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We want to bring back all the glory, all the praises and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Church, today we will be continuing in our subpart 3, You Were Formed for God's Family in our Living with a Purpose series. And we are now in our part 5 and the title of our message today is Cultivating Community. In James chapter 3, verse 18, it says, You can develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoy its result only if you do the hard work getting along with each other, treating each other with dignity and honor. It also says in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, They committed themselves to the teaching of the apostles, the life together, the common meal, and prayers. Beloved, as we discover how to cultivate a strong community today, we need to be aware that community requires commitment. Community doesn't just happen because suddenly one day you pop up and you get closer together as a community or as a family. It requires commitment to journey together. Only the Holy Spirit can create real fellowship between believers, but He cultivates it with the choices and commitments we make. Paul points out this dual responsibility when he says, You are joined together with peace through the Spirit. So, make every effort to continue together in this way. It takes both God's power and our effort to produce a loving Christian community. So, beloved, here in this first part of our uh, message today, we are being reminded that it's only the Holy Spirit who can really recreate that wonderful community relationship and fellowship that we have. But God is also encouraging us to do our part. You know, unfortunately, many people grow up in families with unhealthy relationships. So, they lack the relational skills needed for real fellowship. They must be taught how to get along with and relate to others, God, to God's family. Fortunately, the New Testament is filled with instructions on how to share life together. Apostle Paul wrote, I am writing these things to you so you will know how to live in the family of God. That family, beloved, is the church. That's why here in our second purpose discovery. The first one is we discover about the first purpose. It's called worship. And now in this subpart three, we're discovering how to really be part of a fellowship in God's family called the church. Now, if you tried a fake fellowship and you would like to cultivate real fellowship and a loving community in your small group, Sunday school class, and church, you'll need to make some tough choices and take some risks. It takes choices to develop real fellowship. It takes commitment so that you can continue to grow, not only you, but together with the people that surrounds you to be in depth in God's love. Beloved, today we will be answering this question, how to cultivate stronger community. Now, as a church, we need to understand how we're going to do it. But also, if you are in your office if you are in your community, in your neighborhood, or probably in your own local family, or in your extended family or group of friends, I believe that all of us wants to grow deeper in our journey and in our relationship. I hope and pray that the principles that we will be discovering from the Word of God today will become the foundation and we need to commit to apply it, not only us, but together with the people that we are journeying with. So beloved, let's discover the answers of this question. How to cultivate stronger community? What it takes so that your community and our community, especially here in Ictus Dumaguete, will be stronger as we continue to grow together. So let's dig in. How to, how to cultivate stronger community? Number one, beloved, is this. Cultivating community takes honesty. It says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, speak the truth in love. And we talk about love, it must be an outflow or overflow in our hearts. And we need to really speak with honesty. Beloved, 
you will have to care enough to lovingly speak the truth even when you would rather gloss over a problem or ignore an issue. While it is much easier to remain silent when others around us are harming themselves or others with a sinful pattern, it is not the loving thing to do. Most people have no one in their lives who loves them enough to tell them the truth, even when it's painful, so they continue in self-destructive ways. Often, we know what needs to be said to someone, but our fears prevent us from saying anything. Many fellowships have been sabotaged by fear. No one had the courage to speak up in the group while a member's life fell apart. The Bible tells us to speak the truth in love. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Because we can't have community without candor. You know, Solomon said, an honest answer is a sign of true friendship. Sometimes this means caring enough to lovingly confront one who is sinning or is being tempted to sin. Many church fellowships and small groups remain superficial because they are afraid of conflict. Whenever an issue pops up that might cause tension or discomfort, it is immediately glossed over in order to preserve a false sense of peace. Mr. Don't Rock the Boat jumps in and tries to smooth everyone's ruffled feathers. The issue is never resolved and everyone lives in an underlying frustration. Everyone knows about the problem, but no one talks about it openly. This creates a sick environment of secrets where gossips thrives. Paul's solution was straightforward. No more lies, no more pretense, tell your neighbor the truth. In Christ's body, we are all connected to each other. After all, when you lie to others, you end up lying to yourselves. Beloved, real fellowship, whether in marriage, in friendship, or in the church, depends on frankness. In fact, the tunnel of conflict is the passageway to intimacy in any relationship. Until you care enough to confront and resolve the underlying barriers, you will never grow close to each other. When conflict is handled correctly, we grow closer to each other by facing and resolving our differences. As the Bible says, in the end, people appreciate frankness more than flattery. Beloved, frankness is not a license to say anything you want, wherever and whenever you want. It is not rudeness. Again, the scripture in the Bible tells us that there is a right time and a right way to do everything. Thoughtless words leaving lasting wounds. God tells us to speak to each other in the church as loving family members. It says, never use harsh words when you correct an older man, but talk to him as if he were your father. Talk to your younger men as if they were your brothers, older women, as if they were your mothers and younger women as if they were your sisters. So we are being reminded about how to lovingly speak the truth in love. And my prayer, if you want to cultivate your family relationship, your small group community, your missional community, one of the most important thing is we know how to openly share the truth in love. Beloved, that's the first foundation if you want to cultivate stronger relationship inside your community. Number two, beloved, cultivating community not only takes honesty but also humility. Remember that self-importance, smugness, and stubborn pride destroy fellowship faster than anything else. So you need to be watchful and careful of yourself and other people about self-importance and smugness and stubborn pride because these three elements, if it is present in your own community, this is the way how to let your community relationship falls fast. Beloved, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, it says, Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. You know, pride builds walls between people. Humility builds bridges. Humility is the oil that smooths and suits relationships. That's why the Bible is clear about this. It says, clothe yourselves with humility in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Now remember that the proper dress for fellowship is a humble 
attitude. The rest of that verse says, it says, Because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble, this is the other reason we need to be humble. Pride blocks God's grace in our lives, which we must have in order to grow, change, heal, and help others. We receive God's grace by humbly admitting that we need it. The Bible says anytime we are prideful, we are living in opposition to God. That is a foolish and dangerous way to live. Remember, beloved, that you can do and really develop humility in very practical ways. By admitting your weaknesses, by being patient with others' weaknesses, by being open to correction, and by pointing the spotlight by pointing the spotlight on others. Paul advised, live in harmony with each other. Don't try to act important, but enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. To the Christians in Philippi, Paul wrote, he give, give more honor to others than to yourselves. Do not be interested only in your own life, but be interested in the lives of others. Remember, beloved, that humility is not thinking less of yourself as well. It is thinking of yourself less. Humility is thinking more of others. Humble people are so focused on serving others, they don't think of themselves. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but it is thinking of yourself less. So I hope that in our community, in your family, in your group of friends, or even in our neighborhood, as we connect with them, as we engage with them, we need to build up ourselves. We need to dress up ourselves. Every time we connect, connect with people, it's very important to dress up ourselves with the, the character of humility in Christ Jesus. So that's the second foundation in how to cultivate real relationship inside a community. Number three, Cultivating community takes courtesy. Courtesy is respecting our differences, being considerate of each other's feelings, and being patient with people who irritate us. We all know that in our community, we are a group of people who are um, imperfect. We are growing in the grace and love of God. And there are times that there are really relationships that might irritate us. And it requires courtesy in order to surpass and to conquer those things that's happening inside the community that might cause to break up. In Romans chapter 15, verse 2, it says, We must bear the burden of being considerate of the doubts and fears of others. You know, the Bible says that as we continue to grow deeper in our relationship with God, just like Paul told Titus, it says, God's people should be big-hearted and courteous. You know, in every church and in every small group, there is always at least one difficult person, usually more than one. These people may have special emotional needs, deep insecurities, irritating mannerisms, or poor social skills. You might call the EGR people extra grace required in order to engage no, with this kind of people inside our community. There are people that really indeed we need to connect with them, we need to relate with them, we need to journey with them with extra grace required. Beloved, God put these people in our midst for both their benefit and ours. They are all an opportunity for growth and a test of fellowship. We, will we love them as brothers and sisters and treat them with dignity? In a family, acceptance isn't based on how smart or beautiful or talented you are. It's based on the fact that we belong to each other. We defend and protect family. A family member may be a little goofy, but she's one of us. In the same way, the Bible says, be devoted to each other like a loving family. Excel in showing respect for each other. The truth is, we all have quirks and annoying traits, but community has nothing to do with compatibility. The basis of our fellowship is our relationship to God. That's why we are called family. One key to courtesy is to understand where people are coming from. Discover their history. When you know what they've been through, you will be more understanding. Instead of thinking about how far they still have to go, 
think about how far they have come in spite of their hurts. Beloved, another part of courtesy is not downplaying other people's doubts. Just because you don't fear something doesn't make it an invalid feeling. Real community happens when people know it is safe enough to share their doubts and fears without being judged. The fellowship of church is more important than any individual. So beloved, what a beautiful insight that we learned today about courtesy. If you want to cultivate your communi community in your season right now, it takes honesty, it takes humility, and also it requires courtesy. We need to really engage with courtesy towards one another. So beloved, the fourth one, cultivating community takes confidentiality. You know, only in the safe environment of warm acceptance and trusted confidentiality will people open up and share their deepest hurts, needs, and mistakes. Proverbs 16, 28, the Word of God says, Gossip is spread by wicked people. They stir up trouble and break up friendships. You know, confidentiality does not mean keeping silent while your brother or sister is sinning. It means that what is shared in your group needs to stay in your group. And the group needs to deal with it, not gossip to others about it. God hates gossip, especially when it's thinly disguised as a prayer request for someone else. God says, gossip is spread by wicked people. So we need to always understand that as we continue to be in the community, we need to have strong confidentiality and accountability. Why? Because gossip may spread up like wildfire and it will destroy relationships. Remember that gossip always causes hurt and divisions and it destroys fellowship. And God is very clear that we are to confront those who cause division among Christians. They may get mad and leave your group or church if you confront them about their divisive actions. But the fellowship of the church is more important than any individual. That is why, beloved, as a church, we need to protect anyone who will cause division, anyone that who will try to destroy the fellowship. And we need to protect it with strong accountability and confidentiality as well. So, beloved, that's the most important thing as well in terms of how to cultivate and st grow stronger as a community. We need to have confidentiality and we need to take trust and we need to protect our community in any form of someone or action that will destroy the fellowship and that will cause divisions. So, beloved, that's the fourth one. And the last one, beloved, is this. Cultivating community takes frequency. You must have frequent, regular contact with your group in order to build genuine fellowship. There's no shortcut in this. We need to journey together. Relationship builds as it takes time. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, we are being reminded, Let us not give up the habit of meeting together as some are, do are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another. Relationships takes time. The Bible tells us in this, in Hebrews 10.25, how important to build up our relationship consistently. We are to develop the habit of meeting together. A habit is something you do with frequency, not occasionally. You have to spend time with people a lot of time to build deep relationships. This is why fellowship is so shallow in many churches. We don't spend enough time together. And the time we do spend is usually listening to one person speak. Community is built on convenience. Well together when I feel like it, but on the conviction that I need it for spiritual help. If you want to cultivate real fellowship, beloved, it will mean meeting together even when you don't feel like it because you believe it is important. The first Christians meet together every day. They worship together regularly at the temple each day, met in small groups in homes for communion, and share their meals with great joy and thankfulness. Fellowship requires an investment of time. If you are a member of a small group, I urge you 
to make a group covenant in your missional community. Make a missional community covenant that will include the nine characteristics of biblical fellowship. We will share our true feelings, that's authenticity. Then, encourage each other, that's mutuality. Support each other, that's sympathy. Forgive each other, that's mercy. Speak the truth in love, that's honesty. Admit our weaknesses, that's humility. Respect our differences, that's courtesy. Not to gossip, that's confidentiality. And make group a priority, that's frequency. It is my prayer that through these nine convictions or nine characteristics of biblical fellowship will be alive in our small groups, D groups, church, in our missional community as well. How about you? As a disciple of Jesus, if you will rate and scale from 1 to 10 about your participation and engagement in, in the community of God, in the, in the family of God, how are you? How are you of authenticity? Can you rate or scale yourself? How about your mutuality? About sympathy? About mercy? About honesty? About humility? Courtesy? Confidentiality and frequency? It is my prayer today that as we grow and journey together as a church, let's not neglect being together, not only in Sunday worship service of one and a half hour every Sunday, but we need to grow deeper in our fellowship through a community. That is why in Ictus Dumaguete, we are so sharp focused in discovering, in learning, and growing together, and inviting the entire church to be part and to belong to a certain community. Again, in the message today, it says, even though sometimes we don't want to feel like it, to be part of it, but relationship takes time. Fellowship takes time. This is our overflow in our heart and service in following Jesus. It's good to have that relationship with God. That's the first part of the great commandment. But the second part is we need to love each other as ourselves. We need to love our neighbor as ourselves. And it requires fellowship in order to express that. Beloved, it is my prayer. If you are from Dumaguete City, I want to encourage you. If you are with us in Ictus Dumaguete, we have a lot of communities right now in, in our different locations in Dumaguete. We have missional community in Balugu. We have missional community in, in Kadawinunan. We have missional community in our Young Pro and Batingil. We have missional community in Daro. We have missional community in Sibulan. We have missional community in the marketplaces. And we have our missional community central in Taklobo. That's our one of our hub for those people who are in the downtown area where they cannot access the outer layer of Dumaguete City or outer area or um, in the, in the up uptown area, we have a, a, an MC that is meeting every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. in our Ictus Dumaguete office or center because we want to let people be involved. If you are free, we want to encourage you to be part of it because it requires commitment, it requires fellowship so that we can be nurtured together as we love God and love others. We will be ready to serve and disciple and reach out others as well. So beloved, as we end today, how to cultivate stronger community? One, it takes honesty. Two, it takes humility. Three, it takes courtesy. Four, it takes confidentiality. And fifth, it takes frequency. Beloved, today, I want you to evaluate yourself. How are you doing with the community? What are your steps to take? If you want to grow in living out God's purposes for your life, how are you in these five areas? And if you determine something that needs to be developed or an action to take, allow the Holy Spirit, listen to the Lord carefully, and allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life, partner with the Holy Spirit, and move towards that. And I pray that you will grow stronger in following God's calling for your life. Beloved, before I end in a prayer, this is our D-group discussion for our communities. Point to ponder, community requires commitment. Then verse to remember, we understand what love is when we realize that Christ gave his life for us. That means we must give our lives for other believers. 1 John 3.16 And the question to consider, how can I help cultivate today the characteristics of real community in my small group, 
and my church. What God is telling you right now and how you're going to respond to it. Beloved, my prayer that in your missional community, in your D group, or in your personal journey and study of the scripture, as we go along with living your calling in the purpose-driven life of Pastor Rick Warren, my prayer that the will of God, the purposes and the plans of God will be unfolded in your life. I pray that you will have good sharing time and prayer and discussion and strengthening one another as you continue to grow and multiply. Let us bow down our head and let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us. We thank you, God, for your divine provision, your divine protection. And today, Abba Father, it is our prayer that, Lord, as we discover how to be part of a community, how we're going to go strong, how we're going to do things, oh God, together, it's our prayer, Lord, that just show your love and your, your grace and mercy and let it overflow in our lives so that every time we connect with your body, with the family of God, our lives will become a blessing. Father, use our lives to become channel of blessing as we continue to grow together. We love you and we honor you. Bless our time now. This is all we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless everyone. Stay strong and stay safe always. For our tithes and offering, you can give by scanning the QR codes on your screen. You may give via BPI, BDO, GCash, PayMaya, and PayPal, or you may contact directly our finance officer, Ms. Eva Lucero, at 0995-080-1107 for more information. The title for our passage is A Double Danger. In Luke 12, 15 it says then he said to them watch out be on your guard against all kinds of greed life does not consist in an abundance of possessions when our lord jesus christ issues a double warning take heed and beware he wants us to know about something dangerous first he would have us avoid covetousness a reminder of the Tenth Commandment given to Moses, the Last Commandment, and one of the last he did. Jesus knew that most other sins are bound up in the sin of coveting what is not ours. He says, take heed, beware. Next, Jesus exposes the false notion that our quality of life will increase in direct proportion to the amount of wealth or things that we possess. We may laugh at the bumper sticker that says, He who dies with the most toys wins. But far too many people actually live their lives according to that malignant philosophy. Too bad that they can be interviewed on the subject after they've had a glimpse of eternity. The dangerous duo mentioned here by our Lord Jesus covetousness, and the mistaken idea that accumulating possessions will increase our happiness, probably two of the greatest enemies on biblical trios giving. Our Savior posted a double warning sign at this treacherous point along the road of life, so we will not fall into the ditch. We see the danger. Let's stay well clear of it. As we give our tithes and offering, let us give as those who are aware of dangerous duo and have determined not to be overcome by them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for reminding us about this dangerous duo. Lord, remind us that our possessions does not belong to us, but everything that we have, Lord, belongs to you. And as we give, May it be out of generosity, out of faithfulness towards you. Lord, bless this substance and may this be used for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.